Hi everybody, this is Dan Stoltbarger and we are back home in uh, Hayden Lake, Idaho. And so with that, we're able to do a YouTube for this week's upcoming Middle East update. It is the week of May 12th and I'd like to encourage you right off the bat to make sure you go to our website at holygroundexplorations.com to access this PowerPoint that accompanies the YouTube because really the YouTube is just going to be preview of coming attractions in regarding what we're covering this week. First of all, we always like to talk about sort of headlines that jump, jumped out at us and you'll see three specific ones. One in relationship to Abbas and Netanyahu and Trump in terms of this whole issue of the Palestinians claiming that they're ready to come to the table to address the issues of peace. And when Abbas was asked by uh, Trump to stop funding terrorism, again, we'll see his response. And then Turkey's come back on the scene. They're lashing out against Israel, um, encouraging Muslims to flood the Temple Mount. You can take a look at that. And then let's just call it like it is the whole issue of the embassy uh, moving to Jerusalem the only reason that at least I can come up with for this refusal to move the embassy to Jerusalem is fear of the potential Islamic backlash which literally means that the sovereign American decision is really simply become a hostage to Arab threats. We'll have to wait and see because there's a lot of chatter both ways regarding whether the embassy is going to move or not. And then leave it to Trump. There's an article here of uh, Trump's itinerary and going to Israel and uh, his official visit is scheduled on the 22nd and he's going to be in a variety of places but of course the one place that jumped out is what? Masada. Uh, Trump is scheduled to uh, address, give an address at Masada, a site that symbolizes Jewish unwavering spirit in the face of diversity or adversity, I should say. And uh, American officials have described Trump's speech as, quote, warm and sympathetic towards Israel and the Jewish nations whose people have never yielded. I would I can't wait because I got a feeling there's going to be much more to this speech than what we're being let known at this particular time. Uh, you'll see a picture here in the next slide. Um, the PA attempted, the Palestinian Authority attempted to get Trump to visit um, the site of uh, Yasser Arafat's grave. And there's, uh, you know, they weren't going to let on what was taking place. They were just going to sort of march him through during his visit to Ramallah. And uh, that's been refuted at this particular time, but you can read that for yourself. And then an article that's entitled, This is Interesting. And you'll see the Russian flag as well as the Palestinian flag. Um, Muhammad Abbas met with Vladimir Putin in a resort last Thursday and basically came out and said it will be impossible uh, without the Moscow being involved in the participation. They must be involved in the participation of the so-called peace process in order for it to come to any agreeable resolution. So I find it interesting. It's not only do you have Trump and you have Abbas and you have Netanyahu, now the Russians are invited in as well. We're going to have to, again, um, like so many of these things, just sort of wait and see. Uh, take the time to read the article that says Time for Truth from Naftali Bennett. Uh, I, as I read this, I, I thought, you know, this has to be understood in regards to the so-called peace process that's coming up. Uh, young Israelis is the next title. You know, when in Israel, I'm often wondering where the political swing is. You know, in Israel, you have the far left, 
You have the mid left, you have the center, you have the center right, and you have the far right. And, and over the years, uh, you would make the assumption that most secular young Israelis would be somewhere left or mid-left. And this is a poll that's come out that indicate that a majority of young Israelis uh, between the ages of 15 and 24 now define themselves as, are you ready? Right wing. And a growing number of them are becoming religious. And I start wondering about this return to the land. Uh, they return, we're told in Ezekiel that they will return in unbelief, but it's interesting to see the process that's taking place in this day. It makes me feel like the Lord's return is not too far off in the distance. And then an article that says stipends for terror. I think Americans need to read this article to understand that your tax money, your tax you know, in, in a sense, we're help funding um, terrorism in the Middle East. So take a look for for yourself on this article. Um, coming attractions, I can't wait for this. I just uh, stumbled across this in theaters on May 23rd, a new movie coming out called In Our Hands, The Battle for Jerusalem. And, uh, you know, I just wanted you to see the coming attractions, the poster that's out and look for it coming out in theaters near you. Uh, quotes, got two for you for the quote of the week. So first is from Rand Paul. Uh, good question, I start off by saying. Senator Rand Paul has said again and again, why do we give billions of dollars a year to countries that hate us? Personally, him speaking, I have never forgotten how on 9-11 the Palestinians were dancing in the streets of Gaza and the West Bank while burning the U.S. and Israeli flags. I say no to a terrorist state called Palestine. Hmm. And then on a somber note, quote of the week um, from Ellie Weissel a Holocaust survivor who's recently passed away. I have not lost faith in God. I have moments of anger and protest, and sometimes during that moment of anger and protest, I've been closer to him. Probably for that reason. Something to think about. So that's this week's Middle East update. You'll see... Um, on the PDF that you have in front of you now, the upcoming fall tour that we have, Israel Off the Beaten Path. Uh, you'll see some pictures of some different places that we plan to visit. It also comes with an extension to Petra. You'll see that for yourself. And again, let me encourage you to go to our website at holygroundexplorations.com and check out all the tours that we have upcoming. You know, as I got back from Israel last week, it sort of once again ignited the passion that I have within me to make sure that Holy Ground takes people to Israel, giving them the opportunity to see with their own eyes, to hear with their ears, to smell the smells, to taste the taste, and probably more importantly, it's a place that I would pray that you would hear the word of the Lord for this day. So with that, Shabbat Shalom. This is Dan, and again, coming from home, or I guess home away from home, whatever, from Hayden Lake, Idaho.